So let us talk about the lithography, uh, continued what we did last time that is Wednesday. Uh, one of the thing which I was talking last time was something about uh, lithography itself and I say first we will look into photolithography. The simple reason is even for 16 nanometer or 22 nanometer tech nodes, photolithography is still used, some different forms but yes, one is expecting maybe by 14 or 7, uh, 9 or 11 or 7 nanometers maybe we will have extended UVs or extreme UVs, uh, maybe I will give you a reference of extreme UV research from Intel and also from two other people, you can have a look at them. So that is fine. So let us look for mask. We were telling that we transfer the image and uh, on the silicon. Okay. So what is the mask? So mask is some kind of a glass plate. Even now it is glass plate. Okay. Uh, this glass plate is normally quartz glass plate and uh, sometimes it has some, impur uh, some impurities added so that its transparency improves though quartz itself is very good transparent materials. Now on this there can be a pattern, there are two kinds of pattern possible, one in which this is a dark portion inside the glass which is transparent. Alternatively I may have a dark portion and I may have clear region in that, okay. So window could be clear or window could be dark. So either of the way mask can be created. If the total area or larger area on a mask is dark, the mask is called dark field. Field is overall area. So if the overall area is larger area where the patterns are not there that is darker, then we say it is dark field. On the contrary, if there is a small dark area, the rest is clear, the mask is called clear field. So we have two kinds of mask used, clear field and dark field. Now this dark, uh, the photo plates are this or the mask plates are created earlier on the even for photography on film, polyester films. So what could have the transfer this kind of image, one method is that you create a directly uh, from the uh, optical light as other day showed on shine on glass plate which is coated with emulsion. Let us say this is your glass plate and this is your emulsion. Now this emulsion is normally photo emulsion which means it receive it absorbs light, it absorbs light, it is photo emulsion means it absor 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 absorbs light, photo emulsion. In the olden days for photography, the material used was silver halides or silver uh, chlorides or silver bromides and they were actually suspended in a gelatin solution which is called colloidals. It is not mixing, it is called colloidals. So earlier the films used to be coated by colloidal solution of silver halides in gelatin. And that is an interesting thing that when the such films were made earlier, uh, some films showed very good resolutions in actual photography and they actually tried to find out what gelatin had that it allowed better photography. So it happens to be, it, they happen to know that this gelatin was purchased from Holland where of course probably maybe knowing the dairy products are very popular from Holland. Those cows have eaten mustards. So they thought that if the mustard eating cows gives better gelatin, so they started adding what is called sil uh, silver sulphide with some mustard decorations, thinking that that may improve, it did not. So what kind of science one thinks, you know, you are very temp scientific temper, we do not believe, no, the people believe in what they see and they start thinking over it in a different way. So mustard was added just to say it may better have better resolution, it never had actually, it must have nothing to do with it, it incidentally happened those cows ate mustards, okay. So this gelatin is essentially earlier used to be taken from animals, now gelatins are chemicals which you can create in a lab, so most gelatins are now available and you can suspend silver halides particles in this, very fine particles. And uh, 
when you coat on any glass substrate and you dry it, it sticks to it. So there is a sticking coefficient of gelatin with the glass plate and because of that this is called photo emulsion plates. Okay. Now this plate, uh, this photo emulsion uh, is something in which I can create a pattern. So if I somehow restrict let us say light in this area, if I do not allow light, I, I allow light everywhere but I see I have a darker portion where light cannot go, then the property of this gelatin based uh, emulsion is that it receives phono photons and it actually cyclizes itself to a non hable emulsions. Or there can be possibility nowadays it can be HL emulsion the rest place where light does not come it remains hard and wherever light goes it becomes soft either way it is possible earlier it used to be that emulsions used to be hard and they used to keep uh, whenever you shine light they used to become soft so it is positive kind of earlier emulsions were but both are possible. So if you shine light something absorption will not take place in this region and the rest of the region light will be absorbed. Now once the light is absorbed then uh, let us say it, will, it is so that initially it was hard and you shine light so it depolymerizes itself or if it is a silver halide solution silver halide and silver sulphide reacts with the light and actually silver is left out either cases could be done in that case this will be clear portion and the rest is dark portion it is only thing if it is a silver emulsions photo emulsions otherwise can be op, uh, organics. In which case if this becomes light dependent and this does not, so you have a contrast. So if I remove the plate, this dark portion and develop in something where let us say the portion initially was hard which became soft, so that gets developed, the portion which was did not receive light remained hard. So if I develop this, I may get a pattern which is just like this. This is cross section, so in a plan it will look something like this. Okay. So you can have patterns, you can actually expose the emulsions and wherever dark or clear areas are there, light will do contrast uh, emulsion pro uh, process and may remain black or white portions across the wafer, uh, across the mass plate. Now the problem with mass plate was that firstly emulsion is some kind of a colloidal solution though dried but it is still sticky, okay. it is not very sticky but it is still sticky. So if you put and we shall see next time on the wafer, then the sticking part may also stick to wafer. Okay. So there is an issue which is called in contact printing, the emulsion touches the ma uh, wafer itself. You want to avoid that and as many times you will do this emulsion lithography on different wafers, after a sign that emulsion may go away partially or it may be spin, pinholes may create there. So it will not a good mask, so we have to throw that mask and start fresh again. So what we did, uh, I mean we means the newer, newer, newer generation did that instead of emulsions, these are called soft mask. So we have a uh, glass plate on which we actually deposited iron oxide metal okay. and again did the same lithography on this iron oxide. So let us say I see to it that this portion of iron oxide does not receive light, so that portion is not hable, this portion is hable and you remove this by etching, so you have iron oxide as the place where you want a window, close window. This Fe2, Fe2O3 has an advantage, it is called translucent. What does it mean? Partially transparent. So trans, it has an advantage that in this is very dark. So for a given wavelength, this may be similar for the photoresist below. But for seeing through, Fe2O3 mass may be good and it is little harder than emulsion. So people thought it is better. But iron oxide, it is own problems. Iron oxide gets oxygen from somewhere in the lab and it does not remain Fe2O3, it becomes Fe2O or FeO2 or Fe2O4 and because of that its property is not uniform. So people left this so called first version of hard mask. Since it was a compound, it was harder than emulsion, 
and could be probably better than soft mask actually. The next we came with chrome gold or chrome nickel as the metal instead Fe2O3. So I have a, a glass plate and I have chrome nickel or sometimes even gold also some people did. Some people do not want gold around in the lab so they do not want to have chrome mask which is gold plated. Now the same procedure you block something in that region, etch out the rest of the pattern chrome nickel and you have chrome nickel dark areas all around and since these are metallic, so even if you put n times on the wafer, they normally do not get disturbed by their thicknesses, neither defects come often and therefore most cases if you are using hard masks, chrome nickel masks are normally used. So these are called mask. What is mask? Because wherever those darker portion will be there, the light cannot pass through. Wherever clear portions are there, light can pass through. So this is the simple contrast thinking we are doing. So this pattern or similar other kind of mask, other patterns can be transferred on silicon through this mask system. Is that clear? So this was called mask stopping something to happen in certain restricted area. Why we are looking for this because let us I want to make a diode for example very simple and people believe that diodes are very trivial actually they are trivial in fab but uh, to get a diode characteristics uniformly over a million diodes is not easy. It costs you hell and it is very costly process however all said and done. So in a lab normally if you get one diode and IV is okay you still shouting publish everywhere you know. But in 999 may not be working because there the leakage currents are very obviously should be less than certain given value breakdown has to be exact on resistance has to be good capacitance should be low all features of circuit performance are required. So when you actually make a diode it will always work like a diode but not to any specification. So in industry no one believes that I can make a diode means I can diffuse something it is a diode as straight as that. So what is a diode? Let us say I start with N substrate and I somehow create a selective area P region okay. and uh, somehow I can make a contact to this P region and normally I want a planar diode which means I do not want to take a bottom contact. So I create an N plus region here which is same as contact to N. So this is you can say this is like anode cathode. So a diode actually requires you can see from here now how many mass do you expect this will require. The first has to be for creation of P region second for n plus contact region and third for actually creating the matter metal on that. So a simple diode may require three mask okay. However very interestingly you could have seen I did not make a P plus diffusion there. This is a technology game. Uh, in those days at least uh, in most cases either you use titanium oxide or aluminum both are type Three type, type 3 dopants. So as soon as I make a contact part of the aluminum goes down and actually creates a thin P plus region okay. So you do not need any additional contact to P while it self creates okay. So if you have a PN junction diode the way I have shown then I require third mass but if I have P substrate I may only do N and N plus 2 mass and of course metal. So th N plus wherever I will make it I will need additional mask is that clear to you whenever I will make n plus region in n I will require additional mask because that is only a contact to that region is that clear to you. So this three mask process is essentially what will make a diode similarly for a transistor mass transistor you may require four mask minimum or even six masks in many cases depend and if it is C mass minimum six or maybe any number as I say 30 odd also. 
So, this mask making is therefore crucial for us because it will actually allow us the areas how much the gaps are here, how much is this area because this decides the resistances, capacitances. So, the circuit performance is essentially directly related to the device I make. Okay. So, anything I do mischief there is reflected immediately in electrical performance. And since our ultimate aim is not to learn materials or maybe some material science people are here, they may be interested in that itself, that is not a bad issue. But for us in a VLSI, we are interested to see my circuit functions or my chip functions. And therefore, anything which does not lead to betterment in my chip performance, those technologies I will just avoid, even if they may be fantastic. Okay. I will see that my performance of a circuit should not get deteriorated even a percent. Okay. And that is where the difference starts that we keep looking technologies which are cheaper, reliable and good and still function gives you a performance of electrical which you are looking for. So, no technology is great or something, technology is as good as the performance you are expecting. So, I may reduce my technology content, if you are, you are giving me 5 rupees, this is what you will get sir. So, ohm ka register hoga diode ke andar, one ohm nahi dikhega aapko forward mein, 100 ohm dikhega, you, you paid only 5 rupees, na? so you have that. Okay. So, the game is in design or technology is the vendor who decides what I will use. Okay. He said this is the jeb mein itna hi paisa hai, to mere jeb se bhi itna hi kuch milega, okay. this is bargain out okay. and I want profit out of it, he also wants a profit out of it. So, the real cost has to be even much lower for both sides. Okay. So, whole technology details please remember though we keep thinking of great technologies here because we are trying to learn possibilities, but in real life not all possibilities are actually used. Okay. It is only because Intel wanted a processor to beat Apple processor tomorrow uh, or AMD of course is losing track anyway. So, they are working for better technology because if they do not do it, the others will do it. The worry is not that uh, I do, uh, my processor is bad, uski saf, kami sa musse safed kyo, ye problem hai, okay. So, that is where the technology progress starts because I have to beat the system so that I sell my more products compared to the other competitor. So, this is an issue which you should realize that I keep giving you options, but that does not mean every uh, uh, fab house, uh, every uh, design house or every system house will actually use all kinds of technology. They may use the cheapest among it which gives the performance they are looking for. So, one of the best method of now implementing a circuit is maybe FPGA, okay, which is very cheap. So, why go on a silicon when FPGA are available? Okay. But you need a RAM there. Now, if this RAM access is bad or RAM goes bad, then whole your FPGA circuit goes away. So, you cannot be always reliable on that. But you say, I do not want reliability, teen mahine ke liye chahiye. use FPGA. Okay. Huge, very fast 100k to 1 mega gates FPGAs are available running at very high speeds of typically now 800 megahertz. So, why go all of it on silicon? Go buy FPGA, program it, and sell. So, do not come to see that so design wala, aapne to itna sab seamas padaya, padaya option dekhne ke liye, samjho koji na ke bura I want this, then you should know what I should do. Okay. So, whole course is always focused on this options. Okay. In reality, the system person and the person who delivers it has a choice and he decides how much to do. Okay. There is a standard cell technique, there are gate area techniques, there are many methods which can money can be reduced on a chip. Okay. So, look at the performance, look at the time frame he wants and then you decide where I will go. Technology is only to create something what options I can provide. Okay. So, please learn technology seriously because these are the options you will have to know what is available in market. Of course, Google gives lot of such information, so you do not have to follow everything what I say, but all the same uh, it is better if you know. Okay. Every time you go on this uh, your so called these days mobile which is more like a uh, tablet, you keep actually looking for it and spoil your eyes, it is not fair enough. Okay. So, better if you have your mind, keep your brain intact and remember as many smaller things as you can. So, how do I do this? So, I first start 
a vapor which is say n substrate and then I have the first mask which is shown here. Let us say I have I am going to use PPR. Okay. What does PPR means? Positive photoresist which is normally hard but when it receives light it becomes soft. So since this region I had to open, so first thing I do is oxidize this vapor. By the way lithography is always performed in oxide, nitrides or metal films and never on silicon. Okay. Silicon is the region which you want to do process on. So that is not actually used for lithography. It is the top layer which allows you windows to create for silicon is what we do lithography. So most cases I will use silicon dioxide layer. This may be typically depends on the windows I opening that thickness is adjusted. Now if this is oxide I coat this with a resist. Okay. If I coat it this resist then let us say this is the mask, okay, this area roughly. Now I want to see that this area is open and I am using PPR. Let us say resist use this PPR. So what should be the this portion, what sh this should be dark or this should be clear? Please portion light jana chahiye aur baaki jagah par so kaun sa mask hoga dark field mask hoga aur ye sab jagah dark hai except this window is open so if i put the mask on the top of resist there is this is my window and the rest is darker portion okay so i put the mask plate on the resist and i see to it and this where i have to put is called alignment, okay, is called alignment and we will go through that later. So if I put this and then shine light, typically UV light on this, uh, depends on which UV we will use, this is the other part we will discuss. So what will happen, light will go through clear regions, okay, and will not go through dark regions. So the resist below this portions will what will remain hard because it's the PP, the material used is PPR which is hard but which resist will become soft the window part so as soon as I have soft this I will develop the next stage after this I will develop so if I develop what will happen I have an oxide I have a resist this is my oxide, this is my oxide and the resist will go away except for this portions, the resist will remain everywhere because light did not pass through those regions. This region the resist could be removed, that is called development. So I have removed the resist from the window. The resist is a very good material and that is why it was not developed that means it is unachable hard in many of the chemicals I use most of the chemicals that is why it is very unachable insoluble material. Okay. Now I develop, put this wafer into a solution which HS silicon dioxide which HS silicon dioxide. So what is the agent I use? hydrofluoric acid is the HN5 SiO2. So what we see now that this resist will not allow the oxide below to be etched and only region where it was otherwise open the oxide goes away. So the pattern I receive now is something like this and then I will strip resist. What do you mean by strip resist? I do not want to keep resist for next process. So it must be etched out but the normal agents do not this, the special agents which removes resist is called strippers. So you put the wafer in strippers so that after the oxide is etched you remove the resist from the all regions where it was otherwise sticking. Okay. So I have a window now 
in silicon uh, in silicon dioxide and I am now seeing an area there. So, I start doing P diffusion either by solid state or by implant I am right now showing implant we will see you later and drive it also in oxygen. So, what will happen? It will give a P region and will have of course oxide region on that. If I drive in in oxygen after implant then I will create oxide on the top and impurities will go down because of the diffusion process and I'll, I will create a P region inside N region. So, in a way diode is now available is that correct diode P and N ho gaya, diode ho gaya. Now, the next process what should I do this is the first mask has created P N junction is that correct. The second mask I need which will open a window for either uh, uh, for N plus diffusion. So, which again I want a window to be there I want to etch that area. So, what should be the mass again Sec this is first mask what should be the second mass should look like same kind dark field and a smaller window sorry a clear hai. which is this n plus area you want ok. So, I repeat this process again I deposit resist ok. Now, remember oxide has already come. So, I do not have to go further anything I have during my drive in I have that is why I say every time I will do window only in oxide nitrides or sometimes in metals ok. These are the only things which I will etch the rest silicon is always where I am actually going to do a process. So, that is not etched of course, in a CMOS what is called a step uh, isolations yes we will do that but some other day. So, if I do this you can see here as if this area will now get protected why because the, the this is a dark area only the clear region is this small area somewhere here ok which resist will go away because it will be developed softened then I will edge oxide. So, I will create a ox window again for what this impurity is now N impurities which is either arsenic or phosphorus. So, I can do either implant sub arsenic or phosphorus and I will create heavily doped N plus region below. But during the driving of this drive, uh, this again what I will do? I will oxidize it because any driving cycle will be in oxygen and therefore, as soon as I finish this oxide is grown on that region is that of course, the thickness may vary that may now become like this thinner oxide at the n plus region thicker oxide rest portion, but that is should be good enough for any other things to go through it ok. So, that much driving you have to do ok. So, now I have a p region n plus region. So, what next I will do is you are drawn ok. So, I do need a contact. So, let us so, this is the simplest lithography I will show you and then I will actually look into the details. So, the, now I have a situation in which I have a oxide slightly lower oxide for the P plus region then I have a slightly lower N plus region everywhere is oxide ok and here is N plus and here is P. N substrate. This is what I will get after two mask ok. Now, I want to open windows ok. Before I put a metal I must open windows for making contact is where made to which silicon. So, what should be the mask third mask should be now you can see now two mask has opened only made P and N the third mask. So, the first pattern which is seen here since there will be thickness change optically through a microscope I will see that image is that clear because of the thickness variation the microscope will actually show me the pattern whichever I have printed ok. Because also their thickness are different and therefore, the way uh, optic shows that there will be a change in thickness means change in pattern vis visibility. So, I have this my first pattern. I have this my second pattern second mask 
So the third mass which I want to see that I must open a window in the P at the same time I must open a window in N plus. So now again I am opening a window so this is a clear region mask uh, sorry a dark field mask where this third mask is only two small dots two small squares. The only worry is that this must get aligned in the earlier patterns which I have created it must go inside one. This is only one diode on a wafer there will be hundreds of them or thousands of them or millions of them. So everywhere similar patterns there will be n such squares will be there for per chip and each of them I must get those new windows getting into old ones is that clear this is called alignment is that clear this is called alignment. So these windows must get aligned inside the old patterns okay which is visible through microscope I know this is one this is the other one so I see through it put the mask adjust my mask see that the new windows actually gets inside this. Safety is I will keep some margin all around so that I know that I can get easily inside I may make mistake over the total 3 inch wafer or 10 inch wafers. So I have some margin of my error so this cannot be exactly of this same size it should be much smaller so that there is always possibility even if this moves down up I may have pattern here it goes left or slide it is still inside that okay. So any error in printing as we say it should be taken care through your mass design okay this is what we do. So once I print this by third times I come and do a lithography again put a resist put this mark shine light. So I now say I have a window opened in the P region and in N region okay. So now I have this I have a oxide we want to etch anything in PPR is only etched if the light does not a uh, light passes through that. So if it is a clear area dark field means clear area of the window clear field dark windows dark can I am sorry I, 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 I am awfully sorry but anyway what can I do then I use the NPR okay you are perfect. So I use the NPR which is opposite that it says that wherever light shines it becomes hard wherever it does not it remains soft. So maybe the way I shown the pattern I am using an NPR but you are right I should do you are very correct maybe I should do again this is the first window and there should be another window okay fair enough. So I have the third mass which allowed me to open windows for contact to N and contact to P. Then I deposit metal. Why I show you the contours? Because the process of deposition as we shall see it picks up the contours okay. So it will go everywhere uniformly but wherever it is dipping the metal will go through that okay it is a film so it goes through any undulations okay. So if I now put the metallization typically it can be aluminum in olden days now it can be copper plus titanium plus vanadium plus uh, tungsten many co possible combinations and uh, once I make this now I want the contact uh, this is now connecting all diodes because metal is everywhere okay. So I want selective diode to be made so I must retain metal for this region 1 and also for N plus. So what should I do now another mask which kind of mask it should be 
no 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 please remember now i want to retain metals in this region so now it is a clear filled mask with dark windows for pprs okay the mask will be should cover more than the this window is that correct it should be more than this window even more than sometime this this is whole is a dark area okay which covers that all of it similarly it covers but there is a separation between the two patterns okay there is no metal should come here so if i do this the final version i'll get so how many mask i went through four mask so diode looks so trivial but requires four mask each mask cost a hell okay of course this dimensions are big enough so they are not that costly but even then okay so the way i now see it something like this this is metal same same procedure any film is independent of what the lithography is only by shan because you are exposing resist not the metal etching is going to be for metal the resist will sit on the metal film okay so you are actually etching resist so it is same okay so now what i get here this is my cathode this is my anode so in a four mass process i could make a diode okay for a np transit uh, diode how many mass i would have required i would not have required p plus mask so i would have saved a mask out of that they will require only three mask because p doesn't require p plus it builds itself n requires always an n plus is that clear to you so there is an issue whether to do a pn junction device with np or pn is decided by of course it is with the goes with the other technology part because diode is not singly made it part of the circuit so whatever is the process you will have to keep doing according to that so it can be either n plus p or p plus n so ke sath karna hai ya p p channel ke sath karna hai ya n channel ke sath karna so depends on what n you have or p you have you will decide which diode to make okay it's not so much in our hand but if you want independent diode you create another well and create another diode area for that okay. another mask sets okay anything additionally from process mask it keep adding additional mask keep doing additional processing okay so a process of making a diode requires four times lithography to come and you will make a simple n plus p or p plus n junction diodes now you can see in a cmos process you will have to do source drains you will have to do contact to source drains you will have to delineate gate you will require contact to the gate and you will also require metals so at least six masks will be required to create either n, n channel will require more sometimes or p it depends on whether i want n plus poly or p plus poly or i want n plus and then p plus additional mask will be required for doing this okay so process is is that lithography clear so how close i can bring this is the greatness of my work because if i am working on 10 nanometers or 22 nanometers the separation has to be such that they should be able to separate by that much amount okay any lithography you do the way it will happen they will overlap how do you resolve the two lines that is all that the optics does all that the techniques we use trying to do uh, number of ways we do it Uh, also there are possibility there are problems which we actually when i print something from the mask 
on the resist surface something else appears okay this is very interesting and from resist top surface to resist below till it touches the silicon or silicon dioxide the pattern is not exactly same okay so the upper portion is called airy patterns so this air patterns jo hai yeah, they do not same as wafer patterns so firstly from the mask i am creating air patterns and from air i am going to the resist patterns and there is an error going on everywhere so i start with something and i get something else okay and since i have very small window for adjustments my worry starts extremely high and the cost of therefore lithography increases just because you are asking smaller and smaller and smaller dimensions is that clear lithography is therefore the crux of integrated circuit design uh, integrated circuit realizations and there should be understood well how fast how another way is how fast it can be done see if i take one day for two days then i am broke anyway so i must do in 250 wafers an hour then only i am surviving so lithography technique cannot take each wafer require some three days to actually expose that i will not be able to sustain because the cost will be too high for me so processes we learn now which essentially optimizes many things at a time and errors trying to minimize as much as we can we are not saying we will be able to remove all errors but how minimum errors we can do through some kind of a systems is what optics does okay so today of course i am not looking into optics so much but uh, i am now going to show you this is the basic lithography and mask i thought you should know because otherwise you will not be able to realize what is mask essentially okay so i just thought you should know mask so that when you learn this you also learn because we may not do diode we may do cmos but cmos requires so much okay so but lithography is similar everywhere what is the need required Uh, actually iron oxide film used to be in those days 0.3 microns so typically energy required was 200 millijoules per uh, this uh, a, a centimeter square that is the power density uh, we are looking for less than 100 now okay um, for the case of uh, translucent i mean this uh, chrome this it is not so much the metal it is the resist or emulsion which is going to be put on that which you are going to etch okay so that is still i line or g line in those days so the requirement is not more than 100 millijoules per centimeter square typical energy yes quartz glass plate uh molly uh, are not used because molly has a advantage molly gates are used you are confusing with the mask yeah they, they are called super hard mask the problem with molly is uh, it's not translucent you don't see an image below so there is something called laser imaging so you you need additional mask system to do that so there it is more accurate much harder it remains for long time okay but molly is are uh, unless you are rich enough you will not do that okay. okay so we are and today only i was saying the uh, if you have extreme uv processes the cost of lithography is 55% of the net cost okay so we have across 33% we are now 55% cost only goes in lithography this is what i was saying from the mask on the top of the uh, top of the resist this image is called aerial image and below this inside this is called latent image which is resist image so how much closer this latent image is to aerial and that is closer to mask is all that lithography is expertise is that clear so how much thickness i should have so that it goes very good lower down but if it's too low what can happen if too high thickness is high how much can happen so these are the choices one has to make our ultimate aim is whatever is in the mask identically comes it should come on silicon okay that's what we are looking one to one transfer okay if how much closer we can get is our tricks of the trade okay 
So we have seen some way mask designs, mask uh, fabrication, this we did last time. We looked into light sources and then we also started looking into the wavelengths of the light. Many technologies are with F2 now which is 157 nanometers. Okay. Now we start looking into uh, resist itself and first we will look into photo resist because it is a photon based lithography. Uh, we can also look into electron beam lithography but since electron beam lithography is not directly used in stepper as it is called direct stepping, it is very costly process. However, masks are made using litho, electron beam lithography, they are very accurate. Okay. Uh, the resist there uh, maybe I will just tell you before I come is called PMMA, what is it? Polymethyl methyl acrylate. Okay. So this PMMA is the standard resist for electron beams, PMMA, we will come to it, I just thought I will tell you what it is. Okay. So first look into photo resist. Uh, photo resist are organic polymers and are generally viscous. Okay. They can be thinned down by adding thinners or solvents. Uh, typical resist thickness desired for lithography is in the order of 3000 Armstrong to a micron. These days people are trying to reduce this to 1000 Armstrongs but not successfully. G, there are two possible wavelengths of lights which have been tried. One is called G line resist, the other is I line resist. G line is something uh, 460 and the other is uh, whatever that wavelength I said. One is uh, 436 and the other is 365. Okay. So these are the two line resist earlier view. So what are the problem with them? All these resist contains the three things. One is called resins, the other is photosensitive compounds and third is thinning down of that is called solvents in which actually they dissolve. Okay. Uh, these photo resist compounds are termed as if you add this some of the resins have built in photo, photosensitive material inside them, they themselves are photosensitive whereas in most cases it is not so, resins are neutral. So you add a compound which is called PAC. Okay. Uh, we will see what is that uh, PAC is essentially. Okay. Uh, generally these are negative or positive photoresist depending on whether it you, are add, you have to add a photo PACs or you do not have to add PACs. Some have built in PACs, the emulsion itself or resist itself is photosensitive. Okay. Some you have to add a photosensitive materials. Okay. So generally there will be three resins are ca uh, carbon based or carbon hydrogen based uh, rings of benzene sometimes along with CH3, CH bonds. Okay. So these are photo resist as I say what is difference between other resist photo means they absorb light and change the chemical and start the chemical reaction. Whenever you shine light on resist they do chemical changes in themselves these are called photo resist. Now if you do a chemical reaction somewhere then you will be able to see that in a chemical reaction the A plus B equal to C plus D is essentially governed by thermodynamics. Okay. So most cases we heat the, we increase the temperature that means you are energizing it the process. Now this energy can also be given by photons and therefore photosensitive reactions also do similar as thermal reactions. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we will come. PSC is photo activated some materials which we add, okay, photosensitive compounds or photo activating compounds, PSCs. Okay. We will see that little quick, uh, few sh short time. So, the so far what we have seen is how to do a lithography and to do this I need a resist. So I start looking into possibility of resist I can have. So I said at least for the wavelength earlier we used uh, G line or I line, uh, we have a typical photo resist which contains some resins, some photosensitivity or photo activating compounds and solvents. Solvent means it is a viscous material, I want to reduce the viscosity, I must add little extra solvent, is that correct? 
if I want to thin down that is reduce the viscosity that means I must add solvent to it, thinners, okay. is it okay? So let us look at uh, G line, I line, O ones are generally PPRs and these are called DNQ resist, diazonephthoquinones, diazonephthoquinone is DNQ, okay. these resist are G line and I line PPRs. Okay, are the ones who are closed cyclic chains. Uh, you can see from here, typically resin chain is shown here. Uh, those who are chemist oriented also should see if this is the orientation here, this will be the orientation here. Okay. So, there is some chemistry involved, but anyway, we will not go into that detail. Okay. These are benzene rings and have OH, CH2, CH3 bonds and these are called polymers or polysters or anything related to uh, resins. The material which is base of uh, resin is, is, is essentially called Novolac, okay, Novolac and this is the typical uh, equivalent uh, chain. Of course, this dotted means it is a long chain and at the end they combined itself okay so this for example may actually cyclic out okay uh, a typical polymer had two methyl groups and one oh groups ch3 ch2 plus oh okay uh, dnqs are hard resist okay and do not dissolve in normal solvent developer or that is developers they are hard itself and when they will become soft when they receive energy okay, till that time they remains hard. So this cyclic chain is unbroken without light. So they remain bonded and unachable in most solvents okay, including the developers. Okay. Is that okay? So these are hard resist because they are unachable in most cases. Okay. You can always remove by something. Okay, but these strippings, but otherwise they are normal agents, they do not get attacked. Okay. So uh, is that okay? So can, have you anyone drawn this? This is given, by the way, today uh, now onward the lecture is mostly taken from Plummer's book. So if you do not write also and if you wish to write, I will be happy. But if you do not, uh, everything what I am talking, I read recently the after many days I read Plummer's book for this. So now I can assure you that most of it what I am telling you is available in Plummer's book. Though some terms and some things which I tell are not written by him because that is my experience. But otherwise everything is what I am talking now is available in even more details than what I will talk. Because he may give you 10 cases, I may give you one only. Okay. So that is the difference. Okay, so DNQ is the most commonly used uh, uh, base, uh, is it okay? So when I expose these DNQs, uh, they, they convert itself into a what is called as carboxylic acids, that means chain breaks okay. and once CWH kind of uh, formation takes place and that is called carboxylic acids and they are soluble in what is called as developers, etchers for the resist. Okay. The basic developer is tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide or called TIMA. TIMA. I am spending so much time on lithography, I keep telling you 55 percent if the amount goes, so let us learn 55 percent, nahi to we did 10 percent to karo. So learn lithography because that is the, there are still not good enough models in lithography. There is a lot of problem in chemistry, there is a lot of problem in optics, there is a lot of image processing going on, there is a lot of electromagnetic radiation based uh, designs are going on. So anyone can touch this area for a novelty any day and come out with something and which will be great. So please think it, this is an area which is extremely fertile as of now. Okay. Everyone is trying some funny things hoping that he may be the one to get a Nobel Prize, okay. Yeah, I mean that is the hope, okay. The second kind of resist 
uh, this typical wavelength of the light which we used to work on for the resist exposure is from 2400 Armstrong to 2960 Armstrongs. 290 nanometers, 240 to 290 nanometers is typically the wavelength of UV lights which we used to use for or even higher sometimes but at least this much. However, now I want to do deep ultraviolet which includes some of these wavelengths as well. Okay. So, the new technique or new resist which has come is called DUV or deep ultraviolet resist. What is deep word is that it has a different wavelength which is attacked better by the light. Okay. For better resolution of pattern in the resist, we need resist which are higher quantum efficiency. What is quantum efficiency? So, better light absorption. So, we will model it how much energy is required to actually expose the thickness of resist. Okay i is equal to i 0 e to the power minus alpha x. So, we will actually model and see how much absorption in this thickness will be. So, what kind of reaction like grow deal model we will put a model how much thickness will give how much is the exposures. Okay. So, we will do that model tomorrow. Okay. So, for better reservation I say the uh, mercury source normally have a lower intensity and hence provide lower quantum efficiency. Uh, typically I resist or G line resist gives quantum efficiency less than 0.3. To improve resolution we need to increase quantum efficiency and uh, we add therefore uh, some catalyst okay, which will absorb more light is that correct we, we add some but what is the word catalyst means it should come back it should not it start the process but it should not participate in it or other if it participates should be recovered. Okay. So, that is the catalyst. The catalyst used in the case of DUVs, this is called DUV. Okay. Maybe I should write popularly name as DUV. Okay. The DUVs are essentially, they also have a polymer chain added with uh, some uh, what now we call PAG which is photo acid generator, which is a catalyst is photo acid generator PAG. Okay. This is a catalyst used along with polymers. Okay. Now, if you look at the way sequence of processes and this is given in uh, Plummer's book, you have a polymer chain which includes uh, this catalyst you expose. So, when you expose polymer chain uh, and then you add some kind of a acid here okay, which is the PAG that is continuous process and this acid when it reacts with this insoluble photoresist it actually makes it soluble and when it is soluble it reacts further with polymer and reduce, releases this acid. Is that point clear I repeat acid reacts with or PAG reacts with light and polymer make it soluble and then it reacts with polymer further and releases the acid back. So, this acid is catalyst it did not remain with it, it keeps increasing. Okay. Typical then this process continues you can say further uh, you have acid now reacts with the rest of the part and it will now create both soluble and acid will again get released. So, that is why it is catalyst because acid you add and acid you take out. So, it is catalyst it did not participate in actual reactions, but it added reactions. Okay. Typical temperature of this uh, uh, DUVs uh, where this resist could do uh, exposures is 100 degree centigrade at and the accuracy we are asking is plus minus half degree centigrade. You can think of it resist is thick enough, the process is going down and down, okay. is that clear? So, till everything is done this acid will be released, it will help to so make so some part of soluble, again acid will come out reacting with polymers, again come down, keep doing at the end it will remain acid as a part of the separate which is soluble anyway. Okay. 
So, yes. Uh, so this uh, this is essentially uh, when we use DUV, the wafer itself is the chuck itself is at high temperatures. Okay. The chuck where the wafers are kept is actually under nitrogen ambient at high temperatures. We are selectively treating uh, that part to acid. Actually, it is not shown properly. What I am showing you is the thickness part. So, initially, light shines, part of the acid reacts and actually makes it soluble. Then, acid is again released because it reacts with polymer. That acid keeps going down till the whole resist is completely soluble. So, instead of looking like this, you see as if this is the thickness. I draw it because this is what the figure was given in plumber, so I only copied it during arts. Okay. But essentially saying that as you start, it starts reacting, 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 reacting. Like this. Hmm? Is that okay? So the word which we used in a lithography before today we this, there are two things we are worried about. Uh, one of course is a word called contrast. I think uh, uh, we will talk about contrast little uh, much more we can but briefly what we like to do is the following. Contrast is between black and white how much separation really you see is a grey, world is grey in fact, it is neither white nor black but we want black and white. Okay. So how much contrast I create. So typically. Uh, during the exposure, the exposure starts with a, this is called exposure dose, dose means how, what? The flux per unit area or intensity per unit area or intensity is essentially per unit area. So if you sh have a exposure dose which is millijoule per centimeter square, so somewhere let us say initially all of it is resist, no exposure and somewhere at D0 it starts reacting that much minimum energy it should receive so that it starts reactions. And as you increase this the reaction is faster and faster and it reaches where the reaction is complete. So this dose is called DF, the start point is called D0. This is a PPR, initially it was already hard and it becomes softened as it went through the light exposure. In the case of negative photoresist, it will require some D0 to start the reaction to become hardening now and it will keep hardening and somewhere at DF it will become fully hardened. Okay. So the what is uh, ideally you will expect D0 be equal to DF, okay. that is what we are expecting step but that we will not get, how close we come to this step, okay. that fraction is called contrast number or gamma, is that correct? Ideally I expect tag or tag that does not happen. So how much closer we can get is all that expertise is all about. So the resist choices, additions, search of catalyst, okay, all these games. Okay. Is that okay everyone? I repeat this is everything today has been taken from plumber's book, so no worries, okay. People who normally do not want to see books, at least go and now see the book, okay. Why do we want this step? <coughs> I do not want, uh, the reason is yeah, obviously if I had to keep, uh, what I expect is uh, if I shine light or expose it, whole resist should get exposed in one, but it does not happen. It goes down, 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 down. So whenever any process goes slowly down, it creates its own problems of non-equivalence. What image area you are wanted, what resist is going to give will change. Ideally if it transfers, whatever in the top will come down. The image on the air, air, any image will be transferred immediately to the resist down. But if it takes time, it has possibility of light getting diffractions okay. and that is where the image will get smashed. So how much bad image will come will be how much DF you are away from D0. Ideally I want DF to be equal to D0. Okay. 
as soon as I shine light, everything should get exposed. Okay. As often, but it does not happen. It goes through thickness, as I showed you, chain also, it takes time before it actually exposes. That time taken, that means dose is not what initially on the top is, the, you keep increasing the dose only then the lower portions get exposed actually. Okay. So, that essentially changes the patterns down. Okay. Okay. The term which is used to define this uh, accurately is not true, this is some equivalent number they figured out. It is 1 upon log and whenever uh, at least to me log means to the power uh, to the base 10, ln means to the base e. So, if I write log I am always talking of base 10. Okay. So, log df by d0 inverse is called gamma. Typically df values of the order of 100 millijoules per centimeter square for most dnqs for g lines or i lines. Uh, However, for duv, I want to increase gamma to the order of 5 to 10 with df values going down from 100 millijoules to 20 to 40 millijoules. Why this is necessary? Because lower intensity, if I, I require to expose it, then the diffraction of this will be smaller. So, I want to reduce intensity as much as possible. But I do not want because if it does not expose it, I will give intensity, I will give 100 millijoules. But if it happens in lower, I am happy. Okay. So to and I get same contrast. Okay. So if I get same contrast, I'll prefer this, and that is why which resist will be most commonly used. DUVs. DNQ has a limit. What the wavelengths are? 465 and this uh, 385, or whatever it is. Since those wavelengths cannot resolve the lines much better than their own wavelengths. Okay. So, 0.13 micron lines can be easily resolved through DNQs, but below this DNQs will require much higher energy and therefore it will be difficult for using uh, uh, what we call finer resolutions using DNQs. Okay. So, we will require D, uh, DUVs for this and otherwise what will further we will do is EUVs extreme UVs are what we are now looking for, extremes. Okay. Yes, contrast is between the image which you are, okay, I will show you a figure. Uh, you know there is an image in the air and there is image in the resist which is called latent image. So, how much latent image is different from airy image is essentially the contrast. Okay. Okay. So, some portion of that is not same Okay, I will come to figure then. So, there is an issue, so how much do that what areas do not get exposed okay. and therefore, they will remain something. They, I want this, but if it happens to be this, this means this area is additionally either not exposed or exposed, ex over exposed. So, I am worried on those terms. Okay. Uh, okay, there is another term which uh, it is uh, coming from actually optics, but as of now you just take it. It is called minimum optical transfer function called CMTF, which is given by df minus d0 upon df plus d0, which can also be written as 10 to the power 1 upon gamma minus 1 upon 10. This the CMTF for G line and I line is 0.4, whereas uh, CMTF for DUV is 0.1 and 0.2. So, we want lower and more CMTF as much as possible, uh, we we'll like to see how it ca is possible. You can see if df is closer to d0, what is CMTF? 0. So, smaller the value of CMTF, better is the resolutions you are going to get. Okay. This is called minimal minimum optical transfer function, maybe when I look for lens, I will show you what is actually transfer functions. This results in better resolution of image on the top of the resist to the bottom of the resist. Aerial to lower, how much accuracy it goes down. As I say, I want this like this, it does not happen. If it happens like this, means this image, firstly from the mass, this image will not be same as mask image. From the mask image to resist image, further I have a problem. Okay. And then finally, it goes on the uh, wafer. 
some other thing may also happen on oxides okay, during etching. So, you have etching problems, you have resist problems and you have mass to this problem. So, some problems will try to solve that whatever mass patterns I created are actually etched in the silicon. That window we decided na, based on what that in window has decided in the diode the area. Okay. Now, if your window is some area for a given current density you have designed that changes something else then the current density has changed for the diode is that correct. If larger area appears then your current density is smaller. So, diode cannot give that much on currents. Okay. So, this transfer from the mass mass patterns are generated by whom the designers who think technology people should take care of everything. Hamara kaam ho gaya. Okay. Now, that procedure because those people just give me patterns I will have to worry that what they want am I transferring to the silicon. Okay. That is all the lithography problems. From given mass co coordinates I generate the patterns on silicon which are exactly same dimension or as close to that as much as. Okay. This is what effort is all about is that that is why lithography is tough because they, of course I may tell them that do something bare okay. that is why we show you something can be done at the designs this itself. Okay. Some processing can be done during, during design which is called DSP methods. So, we can do some image processing and do some mischief on the patterns itself. Okay. What is that can be? Let us say x pattern goes to y okay, and whatever lithography I do, but I want x to x. So, I keep assume that I capture y image okay, and do lot of processing inverse processing see that at what time I can get x. Okay. So, that x modified x which is a bad looking x may actually transform into good looking y. Okay. This is called image processing is that clear? I saw last image I said it is a source mashy kya kare isko hi capture karte hai. Phir reverse processing karke dekhte hai ki what x I should have which will lead to this y which is good let us so I can always make games to realize what I really want, but the cost accuracy of any DSP system processor speeds all these issues come there electronics can do everything in its own time there is no own time with us. So, we will have to worry here ok. okay before uh, I think there are few minutes so two things I may show you ok. Uh, there are drawbacks wafer topography during processing has regions of hills and troughs you have seen the wafer during etching there are some areas are thicker some areas are thinner diode also you see undulations. Uh, resist are liquids even if they are viscous they are liquids. So, they actually follow these contours whatever shape the liquid goes through that shape. But if that happens the thickness of resist from the mask okay, is different from different regions is that clear? Ye aisa aisa hai mask to ek flat, flat hoga abhi ye region dur hai ye region pass hai. So, there is a error going on how much undulations you have liquid resist follow these contours this leads to unequal resist thickness because it will fill try to fill it up. Let us say this trough is there. So, when the resist fails this thickness will be larger than the other areas. Now, what is the problem? You are shining same light ok. The left side of resist which is on the thicker area exposed, but this lower area where it went through it did not. Now, the problem is I actually decide that wherever the thicker resist I did processing for that, but then what will happen where it was thin. So, the pro if that problem ex then goes into the thinner areas then I have a problem. Is that clear? One possibility that I only look for thinner resist then I see some areas I do not expose. If I expose the thicker part then what will happen to that thinner part? So, I must worry about. So, there is a drawback in any system because resist goes through troughs and uh, hills and therefore, thickness of resist is different at different points. So, it is called a problem of over exposure or under exposures. Okay. Uh, there is another problem particularly in the metals which instead of silicon dioxide if you have a metal which is 
you are reaching contacts. There will be a metal layer over which there will be a resist and there will be light. Now one can see from here the way it happens. Even other materials can also do the same. There is a refractive index here, there is a refractive index here and there is a refractive index here. Depending on N1, N2, N3, the light which is incident on that may actually get reflected. Is that correct? May get reflected. The problem with reflection is not uh, so bad just like that, but essentially means photons come back. Photons went in, they do not react, they actually came out. Is that clear? So, this is called, and if the phase of incident beam to the outgoing beam is 180 degree, then it forms what is called as standing wave patterns. Then the resist cannot be exposed because standing wave will not allow itching to go through, okay, exposure to go through. So, this uh, problem with metal surfaces or refractive index which is higher than intrudes creates problem that there is a standing wave patterns. Okay. Uh, what will it happen? It will reduce the resolutions. Okay. So what should we do? Easiest solution, break the, ex break the exposed wafers, okay. as straight. Okay. So we will see that how fast, so somehow we change the refract index and thickness of the uh, resist and then we can probably get, why refract index is different in different temperatures? Because the solvent changes. Thick, what is called solute percentage changes and that changes the refractive index. So, some baking may help you okay, to reduce if it is like a, uh, what is called a total internal reflection. So, most of the beam may go out, but I want most of the beam to get in. Okay. So, I must adjust both D as well as the density there or refractive index there so that most of the light is absorbed and not reflected. Is that clear to you? This is essentially what is tried in baking system. We will come back to it tomorrow. The last but a figure, baki kuch nahi. Ye ek figure, dekho. Ye mask alignment hota kya hai? You can see, of course, this is the oldest 1965 mask aligner. Okay. Uh, you can see from here, uh, there is a check here uh, below this on the wafer is kept there. There is a chuck here where wafer is held by vacuum. Okay. On the top there is a square plate which holds the mask. So one side there is a sliding this, you keep the mask and push inside. Okay. This has x, y, z motion. Okay. So this wafer to mask separation can be done or brought down touching itself. It can align by x and y. I want mass to this to align, I will move x and y. Okay. Either I can move the wafer or I can move the mass. Generally mask is held constant and wafers are moved. Okay. The z portion is has to be flat because you are separating and touching. So everywhere it should touch. Okay. So accuracy of z is more important than even x and y. Okay. There is a microscope which is not having a wavelength of light which is same as exposure light. So you can actually see first the image. So first separate the mask from the wafer closer to it and see the image on the mask, pattern on the mask and the image on the wafer and then adjust x and y so that that image of the mask uh, pattern on the mask gets inside the earlier patterns. Okay. That is called alignment. And this all is done under nitrogen environment. Very, what should be the nitrogen flow? If I keep my uh, aligner, I am doing it. Where from nitrogen should go, come and go? It will come from the top. Okay. So where should it come? It should go here, and then it should go out. Okay. Why? Because it should take all the particles, everything out. So I am not adding my dust to that. Okay. Everything should come out. So there is called laminar system. So you have to maintain nitrogen laminar flows. Okay. So it is not trivial, it is very important how much accuracy pattern gets because if there is a particle sitting on the mask, it will not get exposed that region or it will whatever light will not pass through that. That region will go, that chip will go. Okay. So the issues are very cost business. Okay. 
So maintaining a clean room and super clean room in the lithography is a must. So we will come back tomorrow 9.30 and we will continue with lithography, hopefully we will complete tomorrow. So we have seen resist, tomorrow we will see optics.